Okay, so this is the Engway, Engui? Engway P20 e-bike. Uh, it's a folding e-bike. They call it a town bike, but it doesn't look like your traditional Brompton style folding commuter bike. Mainly because I've removed the hanging basket on the back. It weighs a couple of kilos, uh, so it's quite heavy. The battery is heavy in itself as well. More about that in a bit. The rest of the design, the colours, it comes in three colours, white, black and this mint colour which is really quite cool and um, yeah the design of it the look of it looks more like a sporty kind of bike which is kind of cool um, I like a number of things about it the quality the build quality seems really good it's an alloy frame um, fairly lightweight it's about 19 uh, 18 kilos sorry 18.5 or 18 uh, with the hanging basket on the back stock wheels and everything like that as well. I have replaced the stock pedals with slightly wider, better grip ones with more uh, movement on the um, bearing. The stock pedals are plastic, quite thin, and I found they slipped quite a lot on my um, canvas shoes, whereas these obviously provide much better grip. Uh, I also changed the grips on the handlebars. I don't like the thing that sticks out and the silicone used on them is really cheap feeling so I didn't like that so 22 millimeter diameter inner diameter for those looking to replace their grips as well on your Ingway or equivalent e-bike um, everything else is perfect it does fold in I'll show some clips of it folding in later on um, the seat itself very comfortable I quite like this actually for long long rides this has been perfectly fine it doesn't have any suspension, so on rougher ground it is uh, slightly bumpy. So I am using 50 PSI on both front and back tyres. Recommends a uh, recommendation on the tyre itself, these are Kenda tyres. It does say 40 to 62 PSI if I remember right. I might drop it down 5 PSI, maybe even go down to 40, 42, 43 because the only form of cushioning from the rough ground is the tyres. So letting the tyres down a bit will increase rolling resistance, but you will increase comfort in the process as well. So that's an option to play around with. It does come with a pump. It's a cheap plastic pump about probably the arm length of my palm there. Uh, it's a bit rubbish to be honest with you, but it might get you out of a pinch in an emergency. But I've got a USB-C powered my pump anyway that I use for the car and it works for this perfectly fine. The bike itself, really easy to assemble as well. Uh, the stem and steering arm, the uh, steering post, they all attach or they all click in via these uh, quick release levers. So it's really easy to assemble and adjust as well. This is telescopic, so it does go up and down at the stem post here. Um, and it folds down when you do want to fold it by this mechanism here as well. And it's the same with the, the main frame itself. So just pull that little tab down and then pull it out from the bottom to, uh, to fold it in. There's a magnetic uh, attachment on the fork which then attaches to this piece of metal here. So when it folds in it locks it in place, it doesn't jostle about or anything like that. The other cool thing is you do get brake lights on this. So if I just pull the brake, that's the brake light. And you also get indicators. So if I turn on the left indicator, press it again to turn it off, and the right indicator, turn it off. So that's pretty cool. Brake lights and tail lights. And it does have a headlight as well. So you do have an LED, high powered LED. I don't know what the lumens is, but at night time it is very bright. There we go. So let's try that again. There you go. So the LED is quite bright. It does have a cool pattern to it as well. So it does have a beam cut off like a Xenon. It's LED, so you kind of expect that anyway. And then when you turn the headlight on, the tail lights turn on as well. And they do get brighter when you activate the brake light. So at night time, you've got the reflexer that comes with it, but you are easily seen at night time as well. So that's pretty cool. Obviously running the battery, uh, the running the headlights and tail lights on does decrease the battery. But Engway do quote, I did have to clarify with them on email. So the range from full charge, this is a 250 watt battery pack, or motor sorry. And I'll put on the description the specs of the battery itself. But 62 miles or 61 miles is what they quote. You have three drive modes on the controller. 
so the drive mode is basically the pedal assist so you've got mode one mode two mode three and it's just this, uh, the amount of pedal assist you get obviously when you put it to zero there's no pedal assist so you are pedaling just on your own and because there's only one gear uh, there's no sort of derailleur or anything like that because this is a carbon belt drive so there's nothing to clean or maintain and because of that there is of course only just one gear and a level of um, torque sensing you get from your pedaling versus how much motor action is input in is quite good as well so you can really really easily just the smallest amount of pedaling does result in good levels of pedal assistance on just level one itself and i found that to be quite well and by default you do have a trigger throttle as well and this is analog based so if i just press it here so just pressing it in gently does give you walking you can modulate the throttle pretty much and it does become really strong as well so if i Yeah, so there is enough torque in it to really take off. The top speed is 31 kilometers per hour, which is about 20, 19 to 20 miles an hour. So on a full run, you in the UK, obviously on the road, you're it's against the law to have an unlocked throttle where you can't pedal. Where well, you can pedal, but you're not supposed to be able to go that fast uh, beyond 3.5 mph with just the throttle alone. But you do have an option to unlock it. And what that does is it gives you full speed through the throttle alone. So if you are somewhere off-road or private, not on public roads, you can use that if you want to. And obviously if you unlock it, you do so at your own risk. Um, and you can also bring it back to stock. So the same way you unlock it, you can lock it back up again. So it's 3.5 mph only through here. The only problem is at that rate, it's walking speed, 3.5 mph, but there's no torque in it. So if you were trying to go uphill, and you didn't want to pedal, then you just wanted to use the throttle, you can't do that uphill because there's not enough torque at that low speed. You have to unlock it, and then you get the ability to use full torque uphill with just electric, which is really quite handy. Oh, the other thing I forgot to show was you do have some modes in it. So you can, if you long press the set button, you can view statistics of your rides and you can clear the data as well. To get into the menus, uh, you need to turn it off first and turn it back on. And within 10 seconds, hold the set button and then you get to the menu screen where you can customize various options. So you can change it from MPH to KMH, view battery statistics. So if I go to battery now, you can see that I've got one charge cycle. I've charged it once already. I've already driven uh, or ridden, sorry, um, enough times to uh, recharge the battery once. This battery is rated to, I, if I remember right, 500 cycles. I could be wrong. It, I think it might be 300 actually, but I'll have to double check. I'll put that in this description below as well. Um, but there is a few hundred cycles for the charge before the cells begin to degrade and you lose range. So that's 60 mile ish in ideal circumstances will probably become 50 then 40 as time goes on the battery pack itself is quite expensive uh quick googling that i did it's around about 300 pounds for a battery of this size to power it on there's a little switch on the side here you just flick that flap water sealing flap on and flick the switch over to turn it on and locking mechanism it is secured in there by key so you can just turn it and then to unlock it so no one can just steal your battery the other thing to know is these cables here the power cables for the switch gear these are connectors so you can just pull them apart and replace the cable if there's damage or anything like that and the other thing was really weird i've only seen it on this bike i haven't seen it on other bikes but the left brake throttle these are hydraulic brakes controls the front brake and the right lever controls the back brake so i don't know if that's intentional by engway or someone at the factory just accidentally wired up the wrong ones but because it's hydraulic it's just too much faff to undo all of this and then do it round myself the correct way. So it's just something to get used to. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this in mode one for the whole time, but for the sake of this demonstration, I'll just show you what each of the modes do. So drive mode one, zero is obviously you are pedaling manually. And pedaling is quite easy, even with no pedal assist.
it's only when you go uphill where it becomes a bit of an issue. So I'll just go down this alleyway here. And I'm gonna put it into mode one. And now instantly I can feel pedal assist is kicking in. And I'll just put it down to mode two. So pedal assist kicks in sooner now, depending on the pressure of pedal that I'm applying. So the torque sensor is doing its thing. There's cat there. And mode three, that's obviously the most powerful. Pedal assist kicks in much quicker and you can really take off. And I'll put it on mode three. So yeah, that takes off really quick. And I'll do the same again on mode one this time. So stand still, get the pedal out and here we go. So yeah, not as quick, but still very quick. It picks up gradually. And if I do it with zero pedal assist, so this is just me pedaling on my own. And you can see that it takes a lot longer. There's no acceleration there. So we'll stick it back onto one. The thing to note is when you unlock the throttle, the mode, the drive mode that you have doesn't matter. The throttle always has full power. So Let me show you this. So this is what it looks like folded in. Obviously you can fold the handlebar in as well, but um, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Forgotten what it feels like to ride in the rain. It? Forgot what what it feels like to ride in the rain. It's nice until it's not. Stand in the sun, get dried up. <laughs> okay, so now that the first full day of riding the bike properly has been done, I've got a few thoughts that I'd like to share with you. Uh, the bike is charging at the moment so it was on one bar or flashing one bar by the time i got home uh, so yeah full days of uh, of usage there in heavy conditions as well uh, the charger is a external brick adapter and it goes into its own proprietary connector i don't it doesn't look like a standard connector type but on the back of the adapter it does show you what the pinouts are which is quite good and it's 42 volts output at 2 amps so 84 watts total the led uh, the led will go red when it's charging and it'll go green when it's fully charged the uh, reason i'm charging in the shed is it's where i keep my bikes but also the battery pack itself because it's on a no suspension bike i know only e-scooters tend to have the most issues with batteries that explode or catch fire but i'm not playing taking any chances even though it's anyway's a good brand and it looks like everything's really good condition the vibrations and shock that this goes through since it's no suspension and the weather conditions as well yeah so the things i've observed in the wet especially the rain that i went through in the puddles some of them went up to almost fork uh, height so the rear brakes were fine braking performance and bite and sustained grip during lever activation was perfect so no problems at all with the rear brakes 
the front brake you will have heard from a section of this video review squealing and that was with just with medium application the the uh, front brake lever so that is going to be down to the pads I don't think these pads that the bike comes with it does come with a set of spare pads as well I don't think they're very good quality uh, they're really cheap so in the dry they're perfectly fine no problems at all disc is fine as well kind of standard for tetro style uh, rotors 160 mil both front and back but the pads could do with replacing so i'm not a fan of those pads they don't bite well in the wet i'm assuming they're not going to bite well in the cold either so i'll have to try that in the winter time but you can buy the good thing is you can buy really good performance pads uh, for really cheap about 15 20 pounds for a set of um, uh, brake pads from well-known brands so you can find those online really good so i'll do that at some point it's not a hard job to change pads over just take out the pin put the pads in, put the pin back in, and it's that's it, job done. Don't need to touch the hydraulic fluid or anything like that. Um, in terms of dirt and getting mud on it and rain and stuff, all I did was use the garden hose and hose it down. There's no sort of lubrication needed or chain maintenance or cassette maintenance, cleaning off corrosion and stuff like that here. It's a belt drive system. Just hose it down, dirt just rolls off, and then wipe it with a cloth. That was it. Five minutes, job done. So in terms of maintenance and longevity, I can see this lasting a lot longer than a standard bike with a chain, derailleur, cassette, and everything else to go with it as well. Just the only other annoying things were, which I've already covered in the review, the pedals were kind of crap. So yeah, I replaced the pedals with aftermarket ones, which are better. And the handlebar grip I changed as well. So again, factoring an additional maybe between 20 and 50 pounds if you also change the uh, brake pads. So pedals, pads, and grips. Uh, the seat, very comfortable, really happy with that. So no issues with that at all. And nothing else needs to be changed really. So yeah, overall, very good bike for the price and performance is excellent as well. The range of features you've got on the onboard computer, the comfort speed itself, the way it picks up torque is really good, whether in pedaling mode or pedal assist we've got the torque sensor obviously in there as well so yeah very good performance very good dynamics as well steering precision you can dart around really quickly steering uh, turning circle is very good as well so yeah all in all very good bike for the price and it folds down if you need it to but yeah as always like comment and subscribe that does help with the algorithm and if you want to see more reviews like this then let me know in the comments and i'll reach out to engway to see if they want to send me out uh, what some of the other models they've got full suspension versions as well there's a four inch thick tired version that doesn't use a belt but it uses a chain and derailleur system so it'd be nice to take one of those out on the outside trails and hills that we've got down here so maybe review one of those who knows but yeah let me know and uh, once again thanks for watching